Hello, my name is Samantha Becker, and my colleague Dana Williams and I will be presenting on the effects of sociality on anti-predator personality traits. Personality consists of repeatable individual differences in behaviors, and an individual's personality often has important effects on their individual fitness outcomes. To provide some examples, previous studies assessing this link between personality and fitness have found that female gut prefer bold males, aggressive male rainbow fish are more dominant, and female eastern gray kangaroos that are more social have a lower reproductive success. Personality traits such as these can also have carryover effects between contexts or across time that form behavioral syndromes. And both personality and behavioral syndromes can be shaped by an individual's environment. So influences such as early life experiences, social dominance, competition, environmental changes, and predation pressure impact the expression of personality traits and the formation of behavioral syndromes. Not only is personality shaped by an individual's environment, but an individual's personality may also affect how they interact within that environment. And of those, predation in particular is a major ecological factor. It shapes anti-predator behavior from which personality traits such as boldness, shyness, or risk-taking can emerge. And these personality traits can affect how individuals make anti-predator decisions. One example would be during foraging, when individuals make optimal foraging decisions between exposure to predators, resource gathering, and vigilance. For instance, a bold individual may prioritize access to food choosing to remain in a resource patch as long as possible despite increased vulnerability to predators. Alternately, a shy individual may immediately flee to safety at the cost of losing those potential resources. And while predation pressure can impact anti-predator behavior, so too can an individual's social environment. So as you can imagine, different types of social relationships may affect behavior in different ways. Affiliative relationships can positively influence anti-predator behavior through vigilance, risk dilution, and predator alert systems. Meanwhile, agonistic relationships can socially isolate individuals, reducing their access to resources and their potential for predator detection. Thus, an individual's social environment may alter an individual's assessment of risk-reward trade-offs. So here, we asked what aspects of an individual's affiliative and agonistic social environment are associated with their anti-predator behaviors. And to do so, we specifically looked at the facultatively social yellow-bellied marmot. Marmots are ground-dwelling cirrids who live in matrilineal colonies of many females and offspring with one adult male. Yellow-bellied marmots have an interesting social structure because Contrary to most mammals, their affiliative sociality results in decreased overall longevity and decreased reproductive success. Rather, it is the more aggressive female marmots that have a higher reproductive success. And from previous studies of personality in this species, we do know that individuals are consistent in both boldness and docility as yearlings and adults. Additionally, we know that marmot society is largely structured by agonistic adults and affiliative yearlings. Here we have three related yearlings demonstrating some affiliative behaviors by sitting in close proximity, play wrestling, and play biting. To measure sociality, we built social networks from long-term observational data of marmot social interactions at the Rocky Mountain Biological Laboratory from 2002 to 2019. Behaviors were separated into affiliative or friendly interactions like playing and agonistic aggressive interactions like chasing. From these, we built two separate networks from which we extracted the pictured nine social measures. These measures help us identify specific qualities of social relationships, such as directionality, which indicates whether interactions were received or initiated, and centrality, which can measure how important an individual is to their social group. For personality, we measured two repeatable anti-predator behaviors previously used in marmot personality studies. Docility was derived from individual response to trapping and handling. We recorded whether the individual exhibited these five indicators of fear during trapping, summed the result, and inverted it to make a docility score. 
In our data sets, docility had low repeatability. Boldness was measured with flight initiation distance, which is a measure of risk-taking behavior. To measure flight initiation distance, a researcher who was a simulated predator walked towards an individual, marking the distance between the researcher and individual when they fled. In our data sets, boldness had moderate repeatability. We then used a Markov chain Monte Carlo sampler to run bivariate generalized linear mixed models on four combined data sets. Each data set consisted of one personality trait, either boldness or docility, and one social network type, either affiliative or agonistic. The personality trait and one social measure, for example, affiliative in degree, were included as the bivariate dependent variables and a number of life history, environmental, and known confounding factors were included as fixed effects. Lastly, we included unique ID and year as random effects to account for repeated measures. There were nine models for each data set for a total of 36 models. We found that for the affiliative boldness data set, there was no relationship between any affiliative social measures and boldness. However, there were a number of correlations with agonistic social measures. We found that bold individuals received aggressive interactions from fewer other individuals, occupied less central positions in their networks, were less likely to move between aggressive cliques, and initiated fewer direct aggressive interactions. In short, they occupied the outskirts of their aggressive social networks and were either shunned by others or avoided these interactions themselves. For the affiliative docility dataset, we found that individuals who received more frequent affection from others were more docile. And for the agonistic docility data set, we found that more docile individuals lived in less aggressive cliques. Overall, our results tell us that bold individuals are agonistic outcasts in their groups, but that risk-taking behavior is not influenced by their affiliative relationships. Conversely, docile individuals are those who have more social security. These results show that an individual's response to predators is not only shaped by their general social environment, but also by the specific types of social relationships they engage in. We would like to thank the Rocky Mountain Biological Laboratory and UCLA for their support, as well as ASM, ABS, and NSF for funding. We would also like to thank all of the Project Marmenteers who've helped over the years to collect this data. Thank you.